good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending where in the world you are and, of course, what time of day or night it is either. Welcome to the podcast Up On The Edge with Al and Owen. I'm your host, Alan Neild, Big Al, or just Al, whatever you want to call me. And each week, I'm going to be joined by regular co-host Owen Sherratt and other special guests along the way too. Right, let's get right into it. This is the podcast Up On The Edge. Have you even listened to I stuck. Oh yeah, my god! No, hey, I tell you what. Look at him. Can I just have a shower for you? Oh, fantastic. I, I just put my favourite shirt on for you. Thanks very much. How are you? <laughs> You're still lingering after that revolution. Oh, you got to let it go. No, no, no. It's not. It's just the muff. It's the muff. Well, it's the muff that's the most important, isn't it? Absolutely. I, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he won't know anything about that, Al, but we can talk about it as well. <laughs> of course we can, yeah. <laughs> How are you doing, young man? I'm all right, are you? I'm all right, yeah. I was just saying to Al, the first time I met you was in Withingshaw Hospital, and I got to see Patrick Ahern after he pissed that stone out and collapsed, and <laughs> uh, you were sat on the bed talking to him. <laughs> and oh. he kept me... I'll tell you what, Al, Patrick, I felt sorry for him, because the poor lad's in agony, and yeah. this bugger here, just kept trying to make him laugh for a full two hours. I was crying. <laughs> well, done. I remember going into, um, I got a phone call saying, oh, I need off um, uh, producer Paul years ago. Uh, can you get in quick? Pinky's collapsed outside. So, fucking hell. Yeah, right. Okay. So I said, so, and I have to pass the hospital on the way into the, uh, the, the studios. So I thought, well, I'll just call and make sure he's all right. So after a bit of, well, who are you and what do you want to see Lord Pankathman of Walton for? Right. Uh, I opened his curtain and he's lay there and he looked like he was grey and somebody just put a match on him to warm him up. He was that drained of colour. And it all turned out. See you later, mate. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know, right. <laughs> See, fuck, what's he doing? <laughs> Turned out he had a kidney stone and he ended yeah. up having to piss the kidney stone. He said he'd never felt as much pain in all his life. Yeah. He's never had a baby, has he? Well, <laughs> it begs the question, right? Why have you got a life size cutout of, of what's his face? Uh, 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 Dean? Yes. I put my oh. headphones on it. Well, that's last time when you were here, but I've just got to get the gizmo for my posh. These are old ones, old ones, you know, old headphones. Yeah, but I've just got to get the gizmo so I can put it in my new thing. What you so say? You've not, you, we'll just talk amongst ourselves for a minute. Yeah, because that's a great camera. Really right, 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 right. right. Oh, no, as if we would. I mean, not like that. <laughs> What's that round thing? Is that a light? Yeah, oh, probably, do, probably do dental work in the sack line, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I do, I do a bit of dental work. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a bit of a subject. It's a bit, I'm going to have to put my glasses on now, just one second. La, 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 la. <laughs> Dear God, you look like your mum. Like shut up, you. Yeah. Shut up, you. My mum's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Bring that Say you. Yeah. Atlas, isn't it? Atlas. An Atlas. <laughs> Why uh, did you bring up? Hello? How's that? Yeah, that's yeah. Good. I can hear you now. Yeah. Set my glasses off now. You, you look like him yeah, out of You look like him out of Emmerdale, you shaved head. Which one? The vet? Him who's, him who's got, <laughs> please, him who's please got the... Uh, Kelvin Fletcher. Him who's got the hot girlfriend that he'd never had in real life. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> I can't remember his name. Yeah. I don't, I don't uh, know his real name, but there you go. No, you know what I mean, though, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing? How are you keeping? You know what? I've, I've, uh, I'm doing all right. I've, I've been managing to go for a bit of exercise every day since the first of January. What I did a few years ago, um, I realised that it was 100 days from January the first until my birthday on April the 10th. So a few years back, I decided to write a blog every day for 100 days. So this year, I've gone for the um, go for a walkie run type. Thing. A so I've, been, I've been doing that. Now I've got that uh, 10,000 thingy jig on my phone. You know, you 10,000 steps. Right. Yeah. So it's been proper knackering me. I've been doing it and I've been sticking to it, but I've not missed one. So I'm half chuffing myself. That's why I've just done the air wash now. I thought, what's it look good for you? <laughs> I was you thinking do. about, you know, I was, I was thinking about you when I was creaming my body up and that when I was in the shower, you know. <laughs> what, what, what did you, do you put like, um, a lotion on afterwards, just to... No, no, I'm just a soap guy. Oh, yeah? 
you know that from when we played football together. <laughs> Wash and go. <laughs> I have to say, I like. So what you stand like like studio. Do you I like, like it? Studio. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I've even I've had to drag a bear out as well because I've just been recording. Did you steal them tiles from Revolution as well? These tiles. Yeah. Why are you being like that? Because you've got the colour color code. Color, color, think when you've got the Revolution thing here, and you've got the blue and white all over. Hang on a minute. I'm I'm just going to move studios, right? Because I've I've got two studios in my house. I've got this one here. And I've got the other one downstairs. So you can, are you going to do like a green screen now? That'd be really, really impressive for you, that now. Yeah. Green screen? What's that? <laughs> I don't even know. Change it. I genuinely don't know. Change it. <laughs> well, you, you, well, look, you change you as well. Look, You've got a beard now. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Kenny Rogers, there. Eh? You see, you're, you're letting out all my secrets now. So, we... Well, are we not videoing this? Is it just an audio? There you go. Yeah, the there video. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. You've got a bridge yeah. for you to jump off now, Al. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the Golden guitar. Gate Bridge. Yeah, with a guitar. Yeah, right. You're giving all my secrets away. You shouldn't do that. It's, it's I mean, showbiz, though, isn't it? It's all smoking mirrors. People know that. I, I can't afford Dean Martin. So right. anyway, what's it like being nine stone now, then, Al? Oh, fucking hell, I tell you, mate. This lockdown's nearly killed me. Uh, and that was just the COVID. Um, everything, eating? everything in fairness. I'm the same. So, um, I'm just glad I don't smoke and drink because if I smoke and drank, I'd be dead now. I was, yeah. <coughs> excuse me. I like <coughs> a drink. Bit of COVID there, bit of COVID. We were talking uh, last week, week before to Graham. Let me show you this. Look at that. Look at that glass of milk. That's no good for you, that shit. It's milk. <laughs> I, know, I know what it is. We were talking to Graham Wheeler, right? And we asked yeah. him some of his favourite memories of his career. And do you know what he said was his favourite memory? Was me and him being bouncers for Smug Roberts at Smug Gigs? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, that's a that's a while ago, isn't it? Now, isn't it just yeah, yeah? Back when was it, you, was when you were famous. I know when I was famous before I got sidelined, but now at least I'm a chapter in the uh, no, but two lines in Peter Gay's uh, autobiography. That's good enough for me. Did you get a full yeah. two lines off your best? Two name? lines. Uh, I've got a mention, you know. Yeah. yeah. So that's it, really. I'm, I'm, Quite pleased with that. Put that on the headstone. Who wants to talk to you? Just checking. My daughter, Nicole. Guess how old yeah. she is now. That'll make you feel old. Uh, 18. Yeah, yeah. 30. Really? 30. 30. There there you are. Are. And Josh? Uh, 48. <laughs> <laughs> no, Josh is, 20, Josh is 24 in May. 24 and 30. And Oliver... Oliver, my little one, he's 12. I've never met Oliver. I know, I've just came away from you, you know, with oh, that yeah. court order and that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can set the man out of prison, but you can't. <laughs> you can't take the book from prison like out of man. Is he? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah and he's 12 now. He's, um, he's another um, chip off the block, I think, definitely. Is it? Is he? Um, yeah, he said to me, it is one for you. I'll tell you this. I'm not telling anybody this. <clears throat> he gets in the car. I mean, his mum have split up. Not like me, obviously, you know. No, no. Yeah. Look, three houses I've lost altogether now. Um, so <laughs> I went to pick him up. I mean, his mum on good terms. So I pick him up and he's got a cob on, a proper cob on. You know, when you pick him up and you know, they're like, no, 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 you know, that kind of thing. Right. So I could see he had a face on him and his mum did that put a finger to it is sort of thing. I'll give you the belly in a minute, let you know what the score is kind of thing, you know. So I'm, I'm outside the house and I, I'm, she's on my right on the driver's side and my lad gets in the passenger side on the road side. You with me, yeah? Right. So he gets in, he sits, he gets six next to me. And I went, wave to your mother. He went, no, 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 and it, it, I went, wave to your mother now. So that, that's him texting me now. <laughs> no, it isn't. So he goes, <laughs> so wave to your mother now. So he went, uh, you know, like, we're all right. It was <laughs> like a automatic wave, you know. So I started driving off. Just as we got out of earshot, he went, I'll tell you what, Dad. I don't know how you stuck it so long with her. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Five year olds. I had to go like that. I had to go like that. I had to go, hey, hey. That's your mother. That's your mother you're talking about there. Yeah. So, come in the bedroom. You, have you lived there? You know, when, when, when he used to go to school, I'm in, the, uh, I'm in the bedroom, ironing his uniform for him. It's like half seven in the morning. I'm knackered, but I forgot to iron his uniform. So I'm doing his uniform. Doing his, well, not his, I do his shirt and his pants. So I'm like making sure. <laughs> so I'm doing it. And then he comes in all cocky, you know, like, you know, which is fine. But, you know, like we usually have a fight and all that anyway, you know, so I fight. I still win at the moment. And he goes, <laughs> he called me the cocky now. I said, oh, yeah, 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 hey, hey. Oozing confidence this morning, aren't you? And he goes, better than oozing old age. <laughs> oh! oh. <laughs> Well, I kicked him right in the, no, I kicked him right in the bollocks. <laughs> I'll teach you. <laughs> so, Owen, let me tell you something, right? I went to uh, Smug's, uh, met him at his house 20 years ago, something like that. We were going on a, a, uh, some gigs. Sheffield, I think you were playing. Yeah. And in his kitchen, right? Sort of like as you've got your sort of cupboards behind you there. He's got all these bottles of wines, right? On top of the cupboard. Oh, yeah. And I'm thinking, fucking alcohol problem, this lad. I had no idea, didn't realise it, that he had a, a proper drink problem. So I, I thought, what do you do? Well, I'll just ask the question. Like, you know, do you like a bottle? He says, oh, no, no, no. He says, no, not like that. He says, what I do, he says, is every time I do a gig... Yeah, you've got to mention, you've got to mention, though, you've got to mention that I don't drink. I've never drunk. I've always been teetotal, that sort of thing. So he's got all these bottles of wine, and I am talking dozens and dozens of bottles of wine, all full, all with a cork still in. Whenever I do a gig, what I do is I make sure on the rider there's a bottle of wine there. He said, but I never drink it. He says, well, what I do is I come home and I put it on top of the cupboard and they're all in numerical order of the gigs that I've done. He said, and they're all pushed to the back. He says, and when I've been paid for it, I pull it forward. He said, so I know if I've been paid for a gig. Do you still do that? I still do that because you know what I do as well? Because times are hard. I thought, <laughs> what? <laughs> I started buying them. You know them, them gift bags you can get for wine bottles? Yeah. Right. Happy days, Christmas. You oh, forgot someone. Oh, <laughs> wow. You put five you put five of them in the back of the car and it looks like you've made the effort. Because <laughs> 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 you can get them shiny ones. You can get like like <laughs> goldy or you know like bluey shiny bags or goldy yeah, shiny bags. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Them, you know, like five they're like five pounds, a pound for five, something like that. Yeah. And you bang one of them in, and they, oh, it's, women love them. Women love them. And then you're sort of like, well, that's it. And my bloke's like a glass of wine now and again, don't you? So it's not bad, just give me a bottle of wine. And it's also great, because I don't drink, is if I go to a party, you don't want to turn up and just say, well, I don't drink, so I'm not, I'm not right anything. So you take a bottle of wine, and it looks like you're dead magnanimous. Is that the right word? Magnanimous, yes. Magnanimous, yeah. Yes. And I'm surprised you even got it out. I used to have a character called Bernie Presley. <laughs> them. The Presley. I, I, I worked out that well, I didn't work out. I'm not a singer, but well, you know, probably should have shot hitting that, you know, but I'm going to that. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I remember um, that one. <laughs> well, I went, I, I did a gig and I started doing Bernard Manning impression, and I realized Bernard's voice, you can sing uh, most Elvis songs in the key of Bernard, Pres uh, Bernard Presley, Bernard Manning. So you can carry a tune sort of thing. So you can go, well, it's a one foot money, two foot show. And I did the... <laughs> <laughs> so I did a one-man show at the comedy store and I introduced this character, Bernard Presley. And I had a... I got a cat suit made and a load of them, you know, uh, things around your neck. What they call You know, like a... Tassel. You know, like, like a thing to wipe your head with and throw it to the women, you know, one of them. Oh, like, right. Like a silk that's scarf, silk yeah, scarf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm looking for. And I started wiping the bedroom and throwing him into the audience, and it was <laughs> it was a uh, love me tender, love me true. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> what I really wanted to do though was was kill him off. And <laughs> I get on stage, stage as Bernice Presley. I used to come onto that space. Obviously, you know that uh, you remember that, yeah. Yep. And then Easy Rider would start, you know that kind of like the LBC intro thing. And then I wanted to say something really racist. And then a red a red light be on the head. <laughs> and then a sniper kill me. 
<laughs> you ever do it? And I run, I run it by an agent, and he went, maybe not. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Wait, speaking of Bernard, didn't you um, yeah. didn't you look after the uh, Embassy Club for a while? I took it over with young Bernard. Young Bernard said his dad was, was retiring, and um, he said, "Do you fancy doing a gig here?" So I did, and. Um, all, everybody that was famous now was just coming through. So we had a, a really good bill of like um, uh, Johnny Vegas, uh, Bishop, Manford, all, you know, like all the ones that were like the frog at the sun. Yeah. And um, so I put them on and then we had Peter on and then it was like unbelievable when he was on because he was just about to do Phoenix Nights but was making a big noise. Yeah. And um, we packed it out and I remember the bouncer saying, we've not had, <laughs> this is really funny, you went, Sharky, the bouncer there, he went, he said, I tell you what, we've not had sweat on the what? He said, we've not had sweat on the wood chip since Bernard was at his prime. Sweat dripping off the chip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chip wood. You know what Arch <laughs> ever did once, Al? I came on one day, right? Two things. For those who don't know Arch ever, God bless him. He passed away a few years back now. But, yeah. but if, when he was younger, he had this craze for, for decorating. And after I'd left home, he had the house to himself because it was a massive house. We had a big house, you know, like four bedrooms because there was loads of us. And um, we come home one day and he decorated his room. But he, he decorated it in wood chip back to front. So the shiny bit... <laughs> the, sh the shiny bit was, on, was, up, was out on the outside, you know, looking at you. And so I come home the next day and my dad thought my dad was having a heart attack. My dad went, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> it was like you know when the towers went down in America, yeah. yes, and that bloom of smoke, yes, that chased them. Yeah, I opened the front door and I thought the house was on fire. There was that <laughs> much smoke coming out the door, and it wasn't it wasn't smoke. It was it was uh, plaster powder. Oh, right. you know, like you know you smack yeah. plaster off an old wall. Yeah, and he'd watch the program on um, on re rendering your walls to this bare brick, and then yeah, and then varnishing it. So he put <laughs> he put um, a tea towel around his head, around his to his nose, a bit like we're doing now with a mask. Just tied it round him, and he smacks it with an hammer. Not nothing on the floor, so he gets the flat plaster or anything. He just smacks it and smacks it and smacks it until it was all off. And then my dad came in, and my dad nearly had a wobbler, and that was in his bedroom. That one like making it nice downstairs. <laughs> was Unbelievable. Your, show. Was your dad Granddad Roberts? Was that where you got Grand Robert? Certain mannerisms were, but, but um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, my voice sort of came off. Well, yeah, my dad's way of being was just sort of a bit like that. But what really clinched it to make Grandad a bit, a bit nasty? Not nasty, but you know, a bit ah, you bastard. That's like you know, I shag your gram, you know that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I used to get I forgot Echo. I remember doing it. That was that place called the um, Night Club. Come no, no, in, in Oldham on the roundabout. The peacock or something, not the peacock. What was it? Um, oh, parakeeto. No, the parakeet. Parak yeah, the parak yeah, it was there. We did the gig there, me and Archie. And uh, he's dressed as Elvis, you know, and um, I'm dressed as Grandad. What I remember it for is, was even more than what I'm going to tell you, was um, there was this disabled lad in a wheelchair and we couldn't get the wheelchair up, so his mates threw him on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Threw him on stage. And, um, <laughs> so, we, oh, Jesus. so we picked him up and we're holding him like a baby, like rocking him. He was loving it. He was like, <laughs> At least they were up for it. Christ. Yeah, yeah, well for it. Well yeah, but it, yeah. what if it was just somebody that was just trying to get down Market Street or something like that? And yeah, these guys have gone, let's take him in here with us. And that panel, you got standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> <The dunch. laughs> no, but that really happened. He actually got oh. a photograph of him. And I can't remember what I was going to tell you now, but why did I tell you about that? But what did you ask me before that? Uh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> He said something about my dad. Oh, that was it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Grandad yeah, Roberts. The Grandad Grand Roberts thing was, I was, I was in, I was in a car in town, and I just come up with the Grand. I was doing it on radio, on radio with Pete and Jeff, and yeah. um, I'm behind the bus, so there's a bus in front of me, and I can see the oncoming traffic in the on the right hand side. Yeah, yeah. You with me? Got you. So this old bloke on my left 
trying to cross the road. So he sees I've stopped and there's a bus in front of me. So he can't see what's coming on the right. So he comes, he's just had to step out and he thinks I'm letting him go. Cause I, I don't want to say anything in case I go, yeah, and the bus comes and kills him. You know, I just want to stay where he is. <laughs> Cause you know, like you, you know, like you do sometimes when you let the car go. Yeah, you flash so your lights right. and think, oh shit, oh, done that. Oh, just like a near miss. <laughs> yeah, a near miss type thing. So I thought, I'm not going to say anything. And my mate was in the car with me, this American lad. And he well, was a comedian, not, not really a mate, but just, just knew him, you know, from the axe. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're in the car and we, we face it, and a bus comes flying down. It was on Wimsor Road, you know, where the Curry Mile is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And this bus comes flying down. And the bloke's going like that. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks for that. You know, well, cheers, mate. You know, because he thinks I'm letting him go. And he's just about to step out in front in front of the bus. So I bibbed him. And he went, you fucking swats. You fucking never get a fucking heart attack. So he's like that, punching me bonnet. Punch me bonnet. And I'm going, fucking hell. Just saved I'm your life. We just saved your life. <laughs> well, what life he had left? He was about 80 on. Meat pie, anyway, sorry about that. sausage roll. Yeah. Where did that come from? What was that all about? Just a fleet, really. I, 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 was, we, I heard the uh, the song on the service is meat pie, sausage roll coming all and give us a go. Yeah. And then my mate saw me by it. And then I had to do a bit on You know, in your last minute when you do a bit of radio and you have to do a bit and you come up with something. Yeah. It's a bit like Martin Coogan. Remember, go back to the story you just asked me. But Martin Coogan wrote Can You Dig It? Yes. On his own, in his own studio, after the lads had gone home. And he had the ownership of it. And that's why I made a few, Bob, when um, Vodafone. Vodafone used it for yeah. their... Yeah. The, oh, I've got to tell you a story about that. Remember, go back, though. There's loads of stories. To tell <laughs> you do know everybody. You worse than me. I, I no, well, remember, go back to that one. God. What was that story then? What was that story then? Uh, was it? Meat pie sausage roll. Yeah, so let's remind me of that in a minute. All so right. When Martin got his money for uh, Vodafone, yeah, he come round to my house and he went, because um, by the way, for the, for the connection is for anybody who's listening who doesn't know the connection, Martin wrote the music for me by Sausage Roll. Did he really? I went, to, yeah. So me and Archie wrote the lyrics and, I, and Martin wrote the music. Right. Uh, with another lad, another lad um, who'd, who'd done a kind of a rough edit of it. But anyway, we give him some money. We give him, we give him a percentage of it because he wrote the little. The, you know the lick, yeah, or the, yeah. the hook, or whatever you call it. Yeah. So Martin, that's all done and dusted. So he gets the money for uh, Vodafone. He comes out and he said, "So I've got loads of money for doing this uh, advert." He said, "I didn't even know I was up for it." And, he, and I went, "I give him a big hug, and just you know, like you would, like I would well be done. you or whatever, you know." Yeah. You go, "Yeah, well done, pal." You know, because it's that working class thing, isn't it? We beat the system, yes. you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, so he goes. He said, yeah, I can't believe it. He said, I've got enough to buy a studio and everything and all that, you know. So, but the, the point was, and a good point actually was, he'd been to another couple of, another lad he knew, and he'd been going, oh, you jammy bastard, you know, not like re resentful. So anyway, cut a long story short, he's got loads of, he's got loads of dosh, buys a studio, and then he rings me up and he goes, oh, I don't believe this. He said, uh, fancy going out for a meal. I said, I'm going to celebrate. So I said, wow, what's up? So they've just given me 30 grand to, um, to put the uh, the tune on on the uh, iPhone, you know, it was a ringtone. Really? You know, like a little bit of it. Mm. And I said, oh, fucking hell, that's good. 30 grand. He went, yeah, 30 grand. He said, I can't believe it. He said, I just, you know. So we <laughs> went out for the movie. His sister, so we went and picked his sister up. And his other brother, not not any of his famous brothers, but, you know, like, like his <laughs> younger, younger brother. So he comes. They are a talented there, sat, family. Yeah, they had a very talented family. And um, so, because we sat there having a the meal, so we walked in, and he's always missed the fucking, he's always missed the busy head, Martin. Right, I'll get this, I'll get that, I'll get this, I'll get that. So um, one time I went for a meal with him, and, and this flower seller, rose seller, thought we were a, we were a couple. <laughs> and he went, and he went, <laughs> the rose seller went, we do, we do. <laughs> do that again, do it again. He goes, do you want to... Uh, have to buy a rose for your uh, for your partner. <laughs> and Martin goes, he's a tight bitch. <laughs> and the blow was up. Another time I went, and this I'd ordered I'd ordered um, apple pie and custard. You know what like you do after you've had a full meal. 
And the woman came over and sat with me because we're doing the Betty Met. And we're outside having a meal at this place across the road. And the, the waitress come over with the, with the, the apple pie and custard and she goes, uh, who's this for? And she goes, Martin goes, who do you think? And she give it me. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, back at the story, what story was I telling you? You've got to remind me now. I've got to go back yeah. to the same. We're talking about uh, Gannon Roberts and the Meat Pie Sausage Roll song. Yeah, but we've not gone off on one on that, Anna. <laughs> you are shocking. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Martin, I can tell you what, you, your hair's gone grey, hasn't it? You used to have a right yeah, now. It's gone grey as well, you fat bastard, yeah. Stop <laughs> it. Stop <laughs> it. Where's all your curls gone? Where's your curls gone? <laughs> no, you've got to remember, I've just, I've just had a shower. I've still got a full head of hair. You'll, you'll be you'll, all right, though, because your mum wasn't bald. Listen, you're, <laughs> <laughs> you're like Silver Fox. You look like Brendan Kearney now. Brendan who? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Brendan <laughs> Kearney. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, Brendan, Brendan with a nice voice, you know. Yeah. We sat with this DJ we're talking about. Nobody knows who he is, but... Um, <laughs> he come in one day and he's, he's covered in air all over his shoulders. And I went, what are you doing, you scruffy bastards? He went, he said... I just had my haircut on the way here. <laughs> <laughs> He's brilliant, Brendan. He had one in voices, though. It was a, a no. He said he was. He was a good yeah. old pro, you know. But he was yeah, yeah. of his generation, you know. He was of his time, wasn't he, in a way. But you definitely, you definitely uh, hire him because he was, um, he was a pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I learned quite yeah. a bit off him. I learned yeah. nothing off Al. Yeah. But Brendan made up for everything that Al never taught me. So, did Pete and Jeff teach you anything? Because obviously, uh, I worked with Jeff at Signal Cheshire. Uh, mm. I was there when, when Jeff decided one night he'd go to the kitchen to make a broom, slid off to France for a fortnight and left the two <laughs> girls that used to be with him in the studio. But, I mean, it was sad news about Pete when he passed away. Yeah, it was. Um, oh, it was horrible. Well, Jeff oh. rang me and I, I was second me lad to school. And um, I was outside the bloody funeral directors, which is really weird, at the back yeah. of the funeral directors in Radcliffe. And Jeff rang me, so Jeff rings now and again, so I wasn't expecting anything, you know. Yeah. And he just told me, and you just get the shivers, it's horrible, you know. And then, mm. but um, yeah, it was sad, really sad. Sorry, what was yeah. the question again? I've got again. Sorry. Uh, Did yeah. they not teach you anything? Because I know not the well, older, well, not the older. Yeah, well, not, gives him well, not the claim, was, not he was, not he had his own show at Key when I when I was there. Yeah. <clears throat> Pete and yeah. Jeff had their own show. Um, I knew Pete from when he had his own show and was a bit of a star on his own anyway, you know, back in the day. As yeah, was yeah. Mike Sweeney at the time and all them, you know, when the, when the studios used to be in Piccadilly Gardens, you know, above... But that, in the, the plaza. Hotel, yeah. In the plaza, because yeah. it used to be a shopping centre that they shut down and sort of went and, and all that. And um, what was his name? Uh, Dave... Dave... Um, yes. Uh, oh, oh, God. God. Dave... Dave Ward. Dave Ward. Pipe down it. Dave Ward. Nope. Dave yeah. Ward. Yeah. yeah, he used to put a pipe down his pants for photographs. That's Seriously, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Curly's hair. Like. You just put a pipe down his pants to make his wigs look bigger. <laughs> Are you joking? No, I'm being serious. Because lads used to wear, lads used to go to, um, lads used to dance like like pigeons in the day. Because it was sort of like if you couldn't dance, you just went like like a pigeon like that. <laughs> you know, like that. <laughs> Looking around trying to keep cool because it was all like spandau belly and all that when I was discoing yeah. it. You know what I mean? And um, <clears throat> with a pipe oh, down those were the days, yeah. Fagins and all that, and Fagin, the v, yeah, yeah Fagin Fagin on the Thursday night, wasn't it? Yeah, what was the other one called? Um, the Snooty on, Fox he used to do, called Snooty Fox Archie Kelly used to sing there, yeah, yeah, I believe so, yeah, yeah that was years ago. Look, when was the last show? Not down as one. Well. When was the last time yeah. you stood on the stage and did a gig? March last year, really, it's 12 months yeah. almost. This is why I'm so hyped up, uh, hyped up now, it's like doing a gig this now. It's great. It's fabulous. I've been doing, it's funny enough, I've been doing podcasts and I've been doing bits and bobs. And um, right. I did a big thing for the hate crime last week as well, which was good. You know, like publicising hate crime, basically, and, and what goes on and stuff, and encouraging people to report it and stuff and letting them know people are out there can help them out. Was that the so miners? That was quite... That was what? Is that the miners thing? Yeah, it's part of the miners, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing a lot of voluntary work there. Um just helping out. And then we had a big gig for them. We did a big online gig and that was really good. We made a few quid. Um, we had, honestly, God, the bill was like some out of, like like a television bill. We had uh, John Thompson. Um, Rowetta did a bit for us. Yeah. We had a um, couple of bands. Um, Steve Ebert, Justin Moore, I did a bit. 
it's, it's endless to list. I've got a list, but I can't go. I can't remember all of them to be honest. At that minute, but they raised a few grand so it helps them to stay open over the um, yeah, old Christmas and the New Year, and it got us to do the um, the food bank and the uh, the kids' presents and all that. It's so, I'm like, honest to God, doing the food bank is such an eye opener. You know, like fucking bastard Boris and all them. There's no idea what's going on. It's just that. You see men, grown men coming in with tears in their eyes that have got to buck up the courage to walk in. And we have, we do food bags. We don't do like a referral system at the miners. If you come in and you've got now and you want some, we'll give you what we've got. You know, it's that kind of, that's the, that's the, um, yeah, yeah. the way we do it. And then we realised that some of the parents couldn't afford presents for the kids. So we had, we put the word out. The lads from FC United, they donated stuff. Uh, we had some money donated to us. And we got all brand new presents, so they weren't shit second hand. Yeah. You know, like. And me downs, yeah. Yeah, yeah and me downs, like gammy action men or whatever, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> action men, how old am I? <laughs> that I was an old joke, wasn't it, from years ago? That, uh, my, dad, my, dad, uh, my dad said he got me an action man, and when I opened it, there was nothing in it, and he said, Yeah, he's a deserter. <laughs> 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 just before that, that's the other one the other one was uh, we were that poor at Christmas we'd managed to go out in the yard on Christmas Eve and shoot the gun off and come back in and say that Santa had committed suicide <laughs> <laughs> I think on, that was a uh, Les Dawson joke actually. yeah I managed to convince the kids that the uh, when the ice cream man came round if he played the tune out of the van out yeah. of ice cream yeah yeah, yeah. yeah my, my dad one. yeah we were so poor my dad used to put us in the car so we fell asleep and then fill our sandals with, with sand and say we've been at the beach all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember dear. going to the beach. I remember going to the beach one day, and uh, <clears throat> the three of us in the back, me, our John, and Trevor, my mum and dad in the front, and we had we had the little Caligas oven thing, you know, for making a brew on the side when we yeah. when we've been going for a while and all that like, back in the day. <clears throat> and our John goes, our Trevor, uh, our John had fallen asleep on Trevor's lap. And he went, John goes, Mom, I feel sick. I mean, that goes, we're nearly there. You know, we're nearly there. You know, not like you do, because you don't want to stop from someone being sick. You know, like this. <laughs> Next thing, <laughs> <laughs> he was sick. John, no, Trevor was sick all over John's head, in his ear, up his nose. And it was that pongy sick that makes you want to be sick. You know, like, oh. you know, like, you know, you get a sniff and you go, <laughs> So we got out, and my dad had that. My dad had every every old bloke or, or dad always had a four liter bottle of water in the boot. <laughs> yeah, in case the radiator overheated. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad, and I still to this day like, I went, like, well, yeah, we always had a big bottle of water in the car, you know, like a, <laughs> you know, that one with an handle, you know, like a yeah, big yeah, bottle. yeah. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like them. I don't know what they're called, but like, a, like the mill bottles are now the two litre ones. You know, yeah. like a big four litre one, full of cold water. And I remember my dad, and this is true, it's funny so what comes around, what goes around comes around. Because um, my dad made our John lie on the floor and <laughs> was waterboarding him. <laughs> pour, pour water on his head, pour it in his ears, and I just going. <laughs> <laughs> carrots everywhere. Where did the carrots come oh, from? It was, it was horrible, horrible. It was all Never over the shop. Carrots, but they're always there. Well, that's not but saying that, I'm my father's son because years later, when I was married and Josh was little, you waterboarded him. No, Josh <laughs> had one of them. You know the potato heads that you could put, it make like look like a potato, but they've got sand in it or something yeah. in the middle. So he was fucking about with that in the back of the car. And it burst. <laughs> <laughs> And I had a brand new Rover, and a really, really nice Rover, you know, where that looked like a Jag. I remember, I was yeah. in it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so I remember that. Uh, probably that one was at Revolution, actually, had that. Yeah. So, so anyway, it burst in Talaka Bay, you know, in um, in Wales. <laughs> yes. Well, my mum, as my mum called it, Tel Acre. <laughs> Tel Acre. <laughs> she had called it Tel Acre, but it's Tel Acre. Anyway, so it burst, and it was like, Someone had set up a cocaine bomb or something. It was all over, <laughs> <clears throat> and it was pouring down. So I thought I can't kick him out of the car because it'll 
it'll go like he's a bag of <laughs> a bag of flour. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like because you know it'd be like getting Someone's water been on flour. Snow water, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got we got Nicole's umbrella. You know them girly umbrellas, the little ones with with little bits of pattern on it and little cur- furry you know, like, <laughs> frilly bits. He put it over his head and he's, he's crying, going, God, I miss your card. And I'm going, don't matter about the card. And I'm going, you little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to lie him on the grass and do the same as my dad did. I went to Nicole, get that bottle of water out of the boot. <laughs> <laughs> and that was about, <laughs> about 30 years later. And, uh, but it was only a two-litre bottle. You know, we had to have the work cut out and washing his ears with that, really. <laughs> we, we, we've literally it's worse. Been... It could, have, could have been worse. We could have pissed on him, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've got to, we've got to call this. We're going to get kicked off here any minute now. But um, when when you, you should see... you should pay the money and get a proper Zoom account. No, no, no. You say half an hour is perfect. That's what it is. Yeah, okay. It's perfect. Don't call me a tight bastard. Um, when You're do you see yourself being back on stage? Have you, have, is there? I've got, I've, well, I've been writing, which is good. I've been writing, I've been rehearsing. So I've got this thing called Mr. Roberts. Right. I've wrote a new show called Mr. Roberts where I've had to be, become a grown-up at the you know the age that I am. I should have been a grown-up a long time ago. And I've got a thing called Dementia Street that I've written about. My mum struggled with it. Right. And um, what it is, there's seven doors on stage. And I come out at a different door, one to seven, at a different stage of dementia. Right. And work through it. So okay. that you see me going from being normal, if you like, right through to the last stage, which is is death. But then my my lad Josh had a really good idea because you don't want to end it on that basis that you know you know what you know where it's going. But then we um, cut long story short. Josh had this great idea. He said, "Do it backwards." So I come out in a really bad state, and end up you end up finding out what my mum's like at the very end, right yeah. before she had it. So that's 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 coming out. Mm. In May for Dementia Week, so I'm doing that. Super. So we're going to build a set at the Miners. We're going to do the uh, the uh, what's it called debut premiere, whatever there. Yeah. And then I'm going to take it on tour with um, do well just see how it goes, see what the pandemic's like and all this masky stuff. Yeah. Well, so that's where crossed. I'm at. By the middle of summer, get a gig somewhere. we should be good. You should be back on stage. And uh, what about the podcast? If people want to uh, watch your podcast, how do they go about doing? Yeah, that? If, they go to, if they go to the Miners. It's, um, it's the Miners podcast, but it's at miners.org.uk. Yeah. Um, and there's seven up there at the moment, and we're putting some more stuff that I've done, uh, health-related stuff as well. So the, all the Miners stuff is kind of help you out if you want it kind of stuff. Wonderful. Uh, and, we, we, uh, yeah, well, just go to, you know, whatever, just Google us, you see where it's at. Th- this has been fantastic because we've managed to yeah. ask you one and a half questions. That is a record. <laughs> and you know what? You've not answered a one. That's the best thing about it. <laughs> you know what? That, that should be a politician, then, shouldn't it? <laughs> so, um, I, I'm guessing the rule is that you've got to come back on and actually answer the questions next time. Oh, is that what you're supposed to do? I, well, uh, you know, <laughs> why not? <laughs> it's been the easiest podcast that me and him have ever done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, am, oh, I, my, well, listen, am I having am I having um shall I have I've got some chicken for my supper yeah you've got to make a choice for my I mean I mean sweet I've got them packets you know that you get for like Sam Bob at Aldi you got 30 seconds I've got um sweet and sour <laughs> garlicky sort of oyster one or or black you know black beans what, what should I go for oh I'll go with a black bean I'll go with black bean, black bean. I think yeah. yeah, but I've not got any white rice. I've only got the Mexican rice when I think about it. Yeah, I've got no white rice. Mix it and match, you'd be all right. Tell you what, why don't you bring in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, eight, nine, eight. Smug Roberts, thank you very much indeed. Bless you. You're welcome, God. chats. Cheers, if you want to come on again, just give us a shout and I'll do we'll the same do. again. Right, I'll, I'll I see promise you tomorrow. The question. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Mr. Foley. There you go. <laughs> Kids, hey. what are you going to do, eh? Hey. Well, but Aunt Nicole, we're really lucky. Oh, that's nice. No, no, she's good as gold. Is she? Oh, no, I tell you now, <laughs> hey, Josh and Oliver. So, yeah, hey, yeah. Miss this... Yeah, Agnes <laughs> Ford now. <laughs> Thank you. That was brilliant. I love Match of the Day too. Yeah, me too. Just all be finished now with some dramatic music. Yeah, and a bit of a montage. Love a bit of a montage.
I know what I'm doing. Right, okay. Go on. Ah!